Terrific. It's all yours. So here we go. All right. We practiced this, so hopefully it's going to work. <laughs> going to share my screen. Can anyone see pyramids? Yes. <laughs> it's working, huh? Okay. Yes. So... It's a pleasure to be invited to speak with your group today, this evening, about silver diamine fluoride and the effect that it's having, having in dentistry all around the world. And uh, so I'm happy to tell you, tell you this story. So this was my wife, Joanne, and I um, about a year ago in Egypt telling the story of SDF. So again, I'm Steve Duffin. Um, this is my email address, and so if we don't cover all the questions and you'd like additional information, let me know. Um, I'm going to share this PowerPoint presentation with your organization and has a lot of content, a lot of references um, that anyone can look at if they like. Okay. So in the sense of disclosures, um, I own a dental practice in Kaiser, Oregon called Show Review Dental. I'm also involved with a couple of other organizations. Oral Health Outreach is a um, humanitarian uh, program that does work in Oregon and around the world. Um, NODK uh, stands for no DK hint, <laughs> is a medical device company that my son Marcus and I manage to bring the technology to children and, and adults that need this throughout the world. Um, I'm also the principal editor of the textbook, Smart World Health. We'll talk some more about that later. Sure. It's available. Um, Marcus and I has, have also built an electronic library. The MMC library stands for Medical Management of Carries Library. And we've collected hundreds and hundreds, I think, we were at like 700 papers and we have hundreds of videos, um, anything and everything that I could find that's related to the medical management of tooth decay, we've put placed there. Um, let me say that it's under development or redevelopment right now. So give it about two or three weeks and then you can go there and uh, you can find historical papers from 150 years ago to um, presentations by Jeremy Horst uh, six months ago. It's all there. The uh, Smart Oral Health is a textbook. Uh, it's a pretty big textbook, about 500 pages, and it includes 30 contributing uh, authors from all over the world. Um, this cover photo I received from Jeff Knight in Australia, and it's an image of a cross section of enamel showing silver attached to the surface of the enamel and penetrating into the interprismatic spaces. And so anyway, you'll, this book is now available free in English and Spanish. So you can go to this website if you wanna buy a hard copy, Amazon will print it up and send it to you. But if you just want the electronic version, you can download a PDF. I highly recommend this book to anyone who's interested in this field. So the World Health Organization did something recently, uh, late last year, that's really important. Um, they publish what's called a list of essential, essential medicines um, every few years. And there hasn't been very many dental medicines on that list, but the last publication included silver diamine fluoride, and glass animer cement. These are the core products that we're gonna be talking about today. And they're listed for the entire world as essential medicines that should be available in every country in the world. Amazing. So um, again, the theme here is the medical fluoride and the materials we're going to be available to. I wanna start off with a case report. This is a remarkable uh, story that is still unfolding. Um, this began just about exactly one year ago. And so I wanna tell you about uh, Katie. Um, I was just uh, 
going about my business when I get a phone call from a mom uh, up in Washington who said, um, after asking around, I discovered that you were doing something different in dentistry and maybe you can help my daughter. So she had been to the general dentist about six months before, and she's very cooperative, but she had a lot of lesions. And so the general dentist handed her off to a pediatric dentist who came up with a treatment plan, um, which involved general anesthesia and treatment of 20 teeth at a cost of almost $11,000. And the parent wasn't so much worried about the cost, but the risk of general anesthesia. And so um, I explained to her, yes, there is a medicine, silver diamine fluoride, which will stop decay. And she might be a candidate. If, you, if you'd like to come down, we'll examine her. And so one of the dental hygienists that had been involved with talking with this family is Sarah Lutke. She's standing with me on the image on the left. And so she came down with the family. And again, this was almost a year ago. We met them at my office. I met this delightful, you know, four-year-old girl who unfortunately had decay throughout her mouth. The good news is that there was no pulpal involvement. Mm. So um, this was a perfect opportunity to use medicine to stop the progression of the decay. And after we talked with the mom in detail about the history of the medicine, what we would expect to see, et cetera, uh, she gave consent and we began treatment that day at my office. And I wanted to um, use this as an opportunity to try and transfer what I was doing to the dental hygienist, Sarah Lutke. And so she was assisting me. And in this image, we're actually using Superfloss to place SDF interproximally between uh, some of her teeth where the lesions were placed. And she's sitting in her mom's uh, lap. Now, I'm not gonna show you an image of treatment in the OR under general anesthesia because they, those images that I took myself uh, are still shocking, but compare this to the extreme um, yeah. attempt to control tooth decay with general anesthesia in the hospital. This is much better. So after that first treatment, um, and, and she has interproximal lesions. She has decay throughout her mouth. But once again, there's sort of nothing was into the pulp. She had no pulpal pain, et cetera. So um, I want to do a follow-up um, treatment. And so uh, about two weeks later, um, Sarah went to uh, the, the home of this family. And some of you may know Sharon Golightly. She's standing in the background in her black scrubs. She came in to consult as an academic hygienist and they set up their dental chair in the driveway of the front uh, of the backyard. And so you notice that there's a computer and you can see my face there. So this is real teledentistry. We were all there, but we were at the home of the family and conducting our next treatment. Um, little pitch for Sarah Lutke, um, the dental hygienist that I met. So she is attending and is a speaker at the National Mobile and Teledentistry Conference in Las Vegas, which will be March 3 through 5 this year. And she has been um, nominated for the, a Denobi Award, which is one real honor in our dental profession. So uh, looking forward to hearing her message at that uh, event. So going back um, about a month after we began this treatment, we wanted to place some glass ionomer cement in one of the lesions. And so I decided I needed to drive up to Washington. So I went up there and uh, we did another treatment, notice in the same driveway with our Sarah's portable equipment. In the image on the right-hand side, you can see me with what looks like a weed sprayer. Um, that actually is an invention of my son, Marcus. We call it Air Anywhere. And is all we do is pump air into that thing. And then we can have compressed air without electricity wherever we're at. That's awesome. Okay, so here's an image of what 
kind of decay this little girl had. She had interproximal decay between all of her posterior teeth. She had um, lesions that became obvious when we treated with STF. As we know, the lesions turned dark. Well, look at all these lesions. It was amazing. Now, I want to show you this x-ray, which we took recently. So this was about nine months after we began treating, and she had a lot of interproximal lesions. If you look at the second, at the lower second primary molar, you see a mesial lesion. Actually, a mesial and distal lesion. This is a modo and would have resulted in you know, two, two surface restorations, but we completely arrested this simply by putting SDF in there. And if, if you look at the image on the right, I've zoomed in to look at the lesion. And you can see to the a couple of arrows. The arrow on the left-hand side points to a very light um, line on the x-ray. What that is, is surface silver. So we treated the lesion. We know the lesion is going to turn dark. It's going to become hard. And that's evidence of the silver. And then you kind of going to the right, you can see the radiolucency where the body of the lesion was. And if you keep going, you'll see another band of uh, dense dental material. That's the secondary dentin. Hmm. So we'd see two things happening when we use SDF. We kill bacteria. We also give time for the pulp to lay down the tertiary dentin. Hmm. So anyway, here we are with this uh, cute kid and um, she's all set, um, being cared for as close to home as possible in the simplest way possible. Okay, let's change gears for a minute and talk about chemistry. So maybe that isn't everyone's favorite subject for some strange reason. I loved it. And what I remember is that chemistry is essentially all about the outer electron configuration of the atom, okay? So what's interesting about silver and fluorine, when we look at those two atoms, is that silver has only one electron in the outermost shell. So that atom wants to get rid of that electron, doesn't it? That's why silver is usually in a positive ionic state because that one electron has gone somewhere else. Now let's look at fluorine. Fluorine is the most reactive element in the universe, okay? It has the opposite situation. There is one missing electron in the outer shell. And so fluorine is trying to grab an electron from anywhere and everywhere. When you put these two things together, okay, they like to precipitate. They like to share electrons and go out of solution. That's why we have silver diamine fluoride. So when you put silver in solution and you put fluoride in solution and you just sit there and look at it, it will precipitate pretty quickly. The ammonia was added to try and keep these two ions separate. So enough of the chemistry. <laughs> so silver diamine fluoride I'll, I'll go into history a little bit more, but it comes from Japan originally in 1969. Hmm. Um, and then it evolved into, uh, there, were Australia, there are several Australian products, and there are products in Brazil, in Argentina, um, various, there's a, an ESDF from India now. So SDF is popping up everywhere. And um, Again, the main, the, oh, and it is, of course, here in the United States with Advantage Rust, which, let me say, is chemically identical to the original product from Japan, Saferide. Um, I want to talk about Revistar for a minute because there's a lot of publicity about Revistar being the, the, the SDF that doesn't turn cavities black. Well, I want to give a a few warnings here. And, and number one, the people who invented Revistar are my friends. I don't mean to be um, dismissive of them, okay? But the, the strategy of adding potassium iodide to silver diamine fluoride was to create a silver iodide precipitate, which is white. 
And that, I mean, from a chemistry standpoint, that's true, but it doesn't work so well in the real world. And I encourage this paper, which when you get these PowerPoints, you can look it up by Betsy Turton, which did a careful study in Cambodia, looking at both, does this product um, not turn dark? And number two, does it work? Now, if you think about the chemistry for a minute, the silver, we'll come back to the silver, but it's silver that kills bacteria. Okay. That is the antimicrobial component. And if you're going to bind silver to iodine and create a white precipitate, you're going to remove silver from the reaction environment. And so as soon as I saw this product, I thought, well, wait a minute, it's not going to be as effective. And Bethy proved that it isn't. So in addition to that, the FDA has issued a um, uh, warning that this product, pH 13, is very caustic and can cause burns. And burns have happened in children. We want to think about the pH. Uh, the original pH of Saferide and the Advantage Rest product is about 8, 9, 10 in that range. Okay, pH 13 or pH 3 is not a good idea. Um, over the years, I've done thousands of cases. And when I first heard about silver diamine fluoride, um, I contacted a dentist in, in Japan and I had him send me a bottle in the mail. And I put it on my desk and I stared at it for about six months because I, I didn't, I was afraid to use it. There wasn't very much literature about it. But I decided you know, maybe it will help the kids that are waiting to go to the OR. So I had a very big pediatric practice and we were going to the, to the OR regularly and I had a wait time of almost six months. And so these children were waiting to go to the OR and many of them would come in with abscesses while they're on the waiting list. And so I thought, at least let's put SDF on these kids waiting to go to the OR. And so this is my setup on the left. Um, I simply put one drop of SDF. I have a little micro brush. I have fluoride varnish to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just speak to the SDF plus fluoride varnish protocol because I guess I am responsible for developing that. It's created a lot of turmoil in the profession. And a lot of people have said, there's enough fluoride in the SDF. You don't need fluoride varnish. I know that. <laughs> the reason that I have advocated for putting varnish on after SDF is to protect the treated lesion from saliva. Silver binds to salivary proteins. And so if you'd simply dry the tooth, put SDF on, have the kid close their mouth, number one, they'll yell because the stuff tastes so bad. Okay, the fluoride varnish helps to mask the taste. But more importantly, it keeps the silver in contact with the treated surface of the tooth longer. So that's why we have the two-step protocol. Anyway, I discovered that I was able to treat children, you know, sitting on their mom's lap uh, without papoose boards and, and without the need to go to the OR. It just completely changed my practice. Um, from having a, a significant component based on sedation and general anesthesia to, to nothing, none of that. Uh, I was so astonished. And I started doing this in 2006. By 2012, I was so amazed and I'd been collecting data on the cases that I was treating. And I was able to publish this in the California Dental Journal in November. And it shows that the OR cases in our practice went to zero. This was in 2011. And uh, we're 12 years later, 10, 11 years later, and we still do not go to the OR. We have an occasional child with severe developmental disabilities that I will refer to a doctor dentist that does continue to go to the OR, but we don't. And we just eliminate. Have air calls because we're down here. Pardon me. So perhaps everyone should mute themselves while we're talking. 
Okay. A little more information about SDF, okay? If we look at it um, from the original Japanese version, it's a colorless liquid. 25% by weight is silver ion. This is the antimicrobial component. Only 8% is ammonia. And people have complained, oh, the ammonia smells so bad, the kids throw up. And, okay. Ammonia isn't as big a deal as most people say it is. And it's really important to keep the silver and fluoride apart. It's 5% fluoride and 62% water. So that's what it is. So what does it do? It arrests dental caries. I have never seen anything like it before. When I started using this, I was just grabbing my camera every time a kid came back because I wanted to document what I was looking at because I, I couldn't believe it. The lesion totally changed, went from an active to inactive status, from a soft, mushy, um, active cavity to a rock hard arrested lesion. I saw changes in the gingiva, uh, less plaque, et cetera. Um, and we also know that SDF, in addition to arresting, has a preventive effect for preventing uh, carries on the tooth and throughout the mouth. It's, it's approved by the FDA uh, for desensitization. It is not approved in the US for caries use. Now, we clinicians can use SDF off-label when we want to. And SDF is approved for caries use in Canada, in um, Japan, in many countries around the world. Margarita Fontana is doing a large phase three clinical trial. They're halfway through it right now. And as soon as it's finished, most likely SDF will become um, the first medicine to treat tooth decay in America. So we're waiting on that. So again, I'm not here to promote advantage arrest. I'm just delighted that they're here and um, the fact is that, that we can get it easily. Um, the point is it's very inexpensive. It's like 30 cents a drop. We can treat an entire half a mouth or a quadrant at least with a drop of this stuff. It's very um, inexpensive. And there is a CDT code now, 1354, which we can use. Uh, Peter Milgram is the professor from University of Washington that I first heard about this. And in about 2004, I was sitting at a presentation where he was talking and he said, guess what? There's this medicine in Japan called Saferide and it stops tooth decay. And I just couldn't believe my ears. I'd never heard that. <laughs> and I immediately decided I've got to find out something about this. And Peter has promoted the um, SDF. And the FDA has recently um, identified SDF as a breakthrough therapy. So this, again, is going to help with the FDA approval for caries arrest. And P Peter is really the person who led us in this direction, and, and I thank him very much. So where did SDF come from? It's important that we understand uh, the history a little bit here. So silver nitrate, we all know about. We use that in chemistry class. Um, but I didn't know that silver nitrate was used in the early days of dentistry. GV Black used silver nitrate to arrest tooth decay in his dental practice 120 years ago. And wrote about that in his landmark book, The Pathologies of the Teeth in 1908. So this has been around for a while, but I wanna go back even further. So most of us think of G.V. Black being the father of modern dentistry. Well, I didn't learn about W.D. Miller in dental school. I learned about him later. This guy is amazing. He was an American graduate student living in Berlin, Germany. And um, he was convinced to become a dentist because he was went renting a room from a dentist 
and he was kind of fond of the dentist's daughter. And so he came back to the U.S. and went to dental school, went back to Berlin, and um, he wrote a landmark book called The Microorganisms of the Human Mouth. Now, remember, this book was written in 1890, okay? <laughs> and so I don't recommend that everybody jump to read this, but if you're interested in knowing the real background, let's put W.D. Miller where he belongs. In 1907, he was traveling back to, yes, he did marry the daughter, <laughs> and he was given the opportunity to be the dean of the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and was traveling from Germany back to Michigan in 1907 when sadly he passed away from a uh, appendicitis. So there is now um, a section um, dedicated to W.D. Miller at the University of Michigan and some of his his notebooks and things are there. And I, I was able to go there and read through that material. So W.D. Miller, my point being, he identified that silver nitrate was the most effective and least caustic agent available to kill oral bacteria. And there it is on page 227, the microorganisms of the human mouth, silver nitrate, amazing. And then G.B. Black came along a little later and in 1908 wrote this monumental book. And he, as I was reading this book, I discovered an entire chapter about how to use silver nitrate to arrest tooth decay. It's really remarkable. Okay. And, and by the way, I, I'll tell you a little bit about dental school. So I went to Emory Dental School in the 70s. It doesn't exist anymore, but I'll never forget as a freshman, we had this big box of tools and books and stuff that we all got to open up. And I remember taking a book out, um, G.V. Black, volume two. <laughs> okay, so that was part of what we studied. But if I had been astute, I would have asked, where's volume one? And in fact, this is one of the problems that we have in dentistry is that we're so focused on the restorative aspects of dentistry that we've forgotten a little bit about the, the cariology, the microbiology, what causes this. And what I found many years later is that volume one is all about the microbiology. It's an incredible book and I highly recommend anyone. By the way, we have an electronic version of this book on the MMC library, which isn't up right now, but it will be later. So if you can't find um, a real textbook, mine looked like it went down with the Titanic, uh, you can read it electronically. The third person, which some of you may have heard of, maybe not, is Percy Howe. Percy Howe was the first research director of the Forsyth Institute in 1917. And the Forsyth Institute is a really important part of the dental profession and the early years of research and especially the development of the dental hygiene profession. I mean, the first dental hygienist of history was his dental assistant. <laughs> and the Forsyth Institute became a big um, promoter of the dental hygiene profession. Now, Percy knew about silver nitrate. He used silver nitrate extensively and he wrote a paper about using silver nitrate that became the most republished dental paper in dental history. And I went back and looked at the, um, the records of the, of the uh, American Dental Association and I found this in 1922 JADA and it's an advertisement for Percy Howe's solution, Howe's solution, which was silver nitrate. And they even had, a, if you look carefully, a silver nitrate stain remover. <laughs> they knew that silver nitrate stained everything. So this was going on a long time ago. And so the foundation that we have for the medical management of caries really was laid down by W.D. Miller, G.V. Black, and Percy Howe. 
I also found out when I was reading about W.D. Miller and G.B. Black that they actually collaborated. In 1906, the year before W.D. Miller died, G.B. G. B. Black traveled to Berlin and worked in the laboratory of Miller. And for about three months, they worked together. And I wish I had been around to hear what they talked about because they both mentioned the use of silver nitrate in treating tooth decay. So again, we come back to silver nitrate as being the beginning. I wanna switch over to fluoride. I don't wanna spend a lot of time with fluoride because we know a lot about it. Um, and it's amazing that GV Black is once again involved in the discovery of um, this other element, fluoride. In 1910, GV Black was invited to Colorado Springs by a dentist by the name of Frederick McKay. And Frederick McKay had noticed that a lot of his patients had brown stains on their teeth. And it was called Colorado brown stain. And he didn't know what it was. He thought it maybe had something to do with the water, etc. cetera. GV Black came and they began investigating. It took 15 to 20 years to figure out that that brown spots were being caused by excess fluoride in the water. But what's important is that they identified that the patients that had this unsightly condition of Colorado brown stain didn't have tooth decay. I mean, there was an inverse relationship between the brown stain and what we now know, fluoride, which led to how much is too much and how much is not enough. And we've come up now with and I'm not going to go into the water fluoridation study. We could spend all night talking about that. But we have titrated what we believe to be the right amount of fluoride. So we're going to talk now about uh, a pediatric dentist in Japan who in the 1960s knew, hey, silver nitrate's good. Fluoride's good. Let's put them together. <laughs> So this is Mizuho Nishino. I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but she was um, completing her PhD in the laboratory of Yamaga in Japan. And she's the first one to bring silver nitrate and fluoride together. And, and she knew that ammonia had to be there to keep those ions separately. And she basically invented silver diamine fluoride. It was shortly after that, 1972, commercialized into a product called Saferide, the first SDF. Now, if you want to learn more about SDF, I'll give you a couple of references. Yeah. Dr. Chu at Hong Kong University has published many papers about SDF. If you just Google, Dr. Chu, Hong Kong University, silver diamine fluoride, you're gonna get enough material to keep you busy reading for the next month. Somebody that I really admire and is on the leading edge of science, of understanding the mechanisms of how does this really work? How does it kill bacteria? How does the silver and the fluoride interact with tooth structure to change the biofilm and reduce and result in the preventive effects. Another paper that I would like to, again, this is his principal clinical trial, trial paper from Chu. Now, another paper that I like to recommend is by Rick Niederman. He is at uh, NYU. The title of this paper caught my attention. This is a long time ago, 2009. Um, Silver diamine fluoride uh, carries silver fluoride bullet. <laughs> and so, well, I'm not sure we have any real silver bullets out there. This is a wonderful review. It's even though he, he played with the title a little bit, I highly recommend reading this very scientific paper. Um, the next person that I recommend is Jeremy Horst. And perhaps all of you have heard of him. Um, He's the principal author of the SDF protocol paper, which appeared in the January 
2016 issue of the California Dental Association Journal. And if you if you want to, you don't know anything about SDF and you want to start somewhere, this is where I recommend you start. He has published many papers about SDF. And he when I met him, he was a po postdoctoral student at University of California, San Francisco. And so I kind of became his friend then and we followed him as he left that into the clinical world. And now he is the um, director of innovation at um, CareQuest, which used to be called DentiQuest. And so he's kind of a real leader in the profession, switching from a surgical approach to treating tooth decay and moving more to a medical approach. So I like anything that Jeremy writes. And again, this is the, the UCSF protocol. It's the sort of the foundation paper. Um, in 2017, the IDR meeting was taking place in San Francisco. And so um, Jeremy Horst and um, John Frischella, Martin McIntyre, you don't need to remember all these names, um, of, and Marcus and I, we all decided to um, have a side meeting. So the IEDR wasn't ready to have a, a, a main speaker on SDF. So we rented a room in the same hotel and we invited people that knew we knew would be attending from all over the world. We had people from South America, from Asia, from everywhere came together. And uh, Jeremy had the great idea of let's do a pop-up dental clinic on the sidewalk. <laughs> and so this image on the left is uh, Jeremy. Uh, John Frischella is the guy with white hair in the middle there. And um, we put together a, a sidewalk dental clinic. And so we were treating um, homeless people, anyone who you know wanted to receive care, while everyone was walking in the in the front doors of the IADR meeting, it was rather controversial. Um, by the way, I filmed it, and it's on the MMC library video, IADR 2017. And we recorded the entire uh, presentation. Highly recommend that once the MMC library comes up, and we have a little video here of us. Okay, do you guys see Jeremy back there with his bicycle? What he's doing is mixing GIC <laughs> with a bicycle on the sidewalk. It was a quite an amazing experience. And this guy um, to the left, with he has less hair than I do, but not by much. That's Graham Craig. He is like the SDF leader for Australia. Absolutely. He developed an early SDF product and uh, somebody that I admire enormously. After that, we went to the... Um, Canberra meeting. Many of you may belong to Canberra or have gone to those meetings, but we started sort of infiltrating various dental meetings around the, the country and talking about SDF and talking about our cases that we we're seeing and promoting the literature. And here we are gathering a few more friends um, as we, as we uh, snuck into dental meetings around the country. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the chemistry. Silver and fluoride are active ingredients. And silver and fluoride are in suspension in water. The ammonia is keeping the positive and negative ions apart. What silver ion does is kill bacteria. The 
positively charged silver ion is attracted to the cell walls of bacteria, which are essentially negatively charged. And the theory, so before I became a dentist, I was a microbiologist. The theory is that bacteria, the first forms of life on earth, um, existed in oceans and uh, water areas. And the way that they avoided um, each other is they evolved a negative charge to their cell walls. And so they were continually moving all the time. A positively charged silver ion just goes straight to the bacterial cell wall, penetrates, goes inside. The silver ion attaches to DNA. It attaches to uh, met metabolic proteins and kills the cell. The cell wall breaks down. And when the cell dissolves, guess what happens to the silver? It's still there. It doesn't go anywhere. So it sticks around to kill the next bacteria that comes along. And that effect has been called the zombie effect, believe it or not. <laughs> so here are a couple of photomicrographs of um, demineralized dentin, okay? And what these, these dentin discs had a microbial uh, biofilm growing in vitro. The one on the right, the control, everything was demineralized, gone. The one on the left is treated with SDF and notice that the bacteria could not demineralize the tooth. It's quite remarkable. This image which appeared in Nature in 2015 shows silver particles inside the cytoplasm of bacteria. So why is silver a problem for bacteria and not so much for us? We'll come back to the toxicology later but silver really is not toxic to humans. And it comes down to this simple reality. Uh, we have skin, okay? We have skin everywhere, okay? When we get in contact with silver nitrate, silver diamine fluoride, silver ion, whatever, it sticks to our skin, which then exfoliate those outer layer of cells, and it's gone. It never gets inside. Bacteria simply do not have skin, okay? If they did, they would be okay. They don't, the, back, the silver ion goes directly into the cytoplasm and kills the bacteria. Fluoride, we know more about fluorine, okay? Fluoride promotes remineralization when a tooth is going through the remin demin cycle that happens all the time, okay? And fluorine is present, hydroxyapatite becomes fluorapatite. Fluorapatite is more resistant to demineralization than hydroxyapatite is. However, more is not always better. We live in a world today where we have, many of us have fluoride added to the water supply. The biggest impact has been really addition of fluoride to toothpaste. We're getting fluoride when we go to the dentist. Uh, when is enough? This is actually the area where- Hi, Kathy. Toxicity Good. Is, is really you important. Can you listen to this silver diamine fluoride lecture? Hello? <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's, it's being put on by the, um, you know, Medical Teams International. So, hello. Um, and it's really I'll, I'll interesting. I'll continue, but you might uh, want to move You might question. still be able to. <laughs> to... So, anyway, um, Marcus and I are working on a oh, it's, uh, it's toxicity paper right now, which will come out pretty soon, I'm looking, I'm, which looks I'm at the fluoride issue on, um, in detail. You know. So we'll carry on here. So combination therapy, the SPF really is what I call combination therapy. Yeah, the silver is killing the bacteria. Yeah. The, it, it's gone. Oh, thank you. The fluoride remineralizes dentin lesions, increases the hardness, and prevents future demineralization. So these two products are perfect um, twins to be brought together.
And thankfully, uh, Mizuhu figured out how to do that by adding some ammonia. Now, um, Jeremy Horst, when I first met him, was working um, at, he was at UCSF, but there's a very large physics laboratory in uh, Berkeley called the Advanced Light Source Lab. It's a synchrotron. It's one of the most powerful um, physics laboratories in the world. And this is where we went to study the teeth that had been treated with, with SDF. And I'm gonna show you some examples. But I thought I was you know, on another planet when I was inside that laboratory. So it was a real honor to be there. So again, Jeremy Horst um, took SDF, treated teeth that had exfoliated, took them to the laboratory. He sectioned the teeth and looked at them. What he found is that the silver went into the dentinal tubules of decayed teeth and formed what he calls silver nanowires. So the silver went into the dental tubules and actually coagulated into metallic form and completely blocked the tubules. This is one reason that SDF is so effective, killing the bacteria and preventing the progression of bacteria. Another image of the, um, <laughs> the laboratory, incredibly complex. Um, this image on the left is one of my uh, one of my failures, you might say, is a, a tooth that was too far gone. But we sectioned it, we sent it to the lab, and we see the section into the dental tubules. Amazing. Okay, let's talk about how to use it. You don't need to use very much. Probably the number one thing that I want to talk about is the importance of drying the surface that you're, te you're treating. So if silver diamine fluoride or silver nitrate for that matter, becomes in contact with saliva, then it's unavailable to kill bacteria or prevent future return of bacteria to a surface. So we've got to dry the lesion. The best way to do that is with compressed air. Well, with the COVID world, maybe we can't always work you know, with aerosols. Okay, so careful drying with gauze, with two by twos, dry the surface, apply the SDF. We wanna scrub it into the lesion as long as possible. Now, if we're talking about a kicking, screaming three-year-old, and a lot of my patients are in that category, <laughs> you do the best job you can. But an ideal situation would be mouth open, gauze, control saliva, dry the lesion, apply SDF one or two times, scrubbing carefully for a minute. That would be the ideal situation. Um, doing that one drop or 20 microliters, you can treat up to five lesions. Of course, it depends on the size of the lesion. Sometimes one humongous lesion is gonna use the whole drop. You'll, you'll gain some experience in that regard, okay? How much should you use? Number one, we don't worry about silver. There's a, a 400 fold LD50 safety margin. And again, I'm, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on toxicology. You can read the paper that we're gonna be releasing shortly, but um, the silver is not what our problem is. Our concern is the fluoride, okay? Silver diamine fluoride has a lot of fluoride. And so we wanna be really careful about how much the child is getting, okay? Especially if, we, if we're covering with fluoride varnish. But the reality is, just think about it, we're, we're treating a cavity, a small spot on a tooth. That's totally different from treating the entire mouth or a child ingesting something accidentally. When we're treating a cavity, we're putting a tiny amount of silver and fluoride on the surface. So number one, getting ready to provide care, PPEs, plastic line covers, cotton isolation, air dry if possible. The Vaseline question. I think it's a good idea to take some chapstick and just put it on the lips of the patient. 
before you begin, because if you get SDF on the skin, you're going to have a dark spot. Now, guess what? It's going to be gone in a week. It's not the end of the world. And so one way to protect that from happening is to put Vaseline or chapstick on the lips. Some people are saying, well, we really should be putting Vaseline on the gingiva because the SDF, and especially if it's Revastar, pH 13, it's a problem, okay? But Advantage Arrest, pH 9, I'm not really worried about it. And I'm more worried about people putting Vaseline into the lesion, right? And then you have a barrier between the active lesion and the SDF. So I, I do not recommend trying to put Vaseline on gingiva, but it's a good idea to protect the skin. I had a little child in South America where I'd accidentally put a little spot on her cheek with my micro brush uh, because she wasn't completely um, cooperative. I saw her a few days later and, and the mom was there and, the, and I thought, okay, I'm in serious trouble because mom is going to be mad that she's got a dark spot on her cheek. And um, I sat down getting ready to be read the riot act. And the little girl said, can you give me another one on the other side? It's a, it's my beauty mark. <laughs> I said, no, let's be satisfied with the one. But my colleagues get really upset or worried about the staining of SDF. Um, we should be less worried about that. And if you are, put some Vaseline on the skin. Okay. Now back to the application. With a small child with lots of saliva and difficult to control, I put fluoride varnish immediately after I apply. I apply for maybe if I'm lucky, 10 to 20 seconds. And then I cover it with fluoride varnish immediately because the saliva goes everywhere. In an ideal situation with a with a older child or a young adult, if you can get a full one minute, okay, for it to dry before you apply the fluoride varnish, that would be great. And then I'm recommending covering with varnish or GIC. The reason for that, we'll come back to the GIC, but is to prevent saliva from, from contaminating. How did I come up with that problem or, or that uh, protocol? When I was beginning to do this, um, I was just amazed at how successful I was able to stop decay. And after about nine months, I started to have some failures. And it was very disappointing to me. I didn't really understand what was going on. But I noticed that the failures were all happening on mandibular teeth, not on maxillary teeth. And what on earth could be causing that? And so I was caught, I became aware of this problem of saliva. Of course, there's a lot more saliva on in the floor of the mouth, especially in children. So we developed this protocol of dry, apply, cover with varnish. And it gets rid of the bad taste. It protects that uh, treated surface for quite a while. As you know, fluoride varnish is gonna stay there for hours and hours. And then we recommend that the child not eat for at least three hours and not brush their teeth until the next day. So the whole reason for that protocol is simply to keep the SDF and fluoride varnish in place as long as possible. And then, then we reevaluate. Again, here's what the setup looks like. Again, this is what I was doing 15 years ago. This is what it looks like, okay? Here's a cavity, isolate, dry, apply with the micro brush. And here's an example of what they look like. Jet black, rock hard, that's success. Here's a little video that I took um, that shows me applying SDF uh, and fluoride varnish on in four quadrants of a child's mouth a long time ago. Open as big as you can. Ah! Good job. 
Uncle Ben, can you track her to the factory? Okay, open one more, okay? You're doing so good. Oh, look, there's a little saliva on that tooth. So she's gonna oh, stop. Okay. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Dry it. There we go. Good job. So finally, somebody decided to test this protocol, okay? And this is a great paper, um, leading scientists. This, this study was done in, in Canada. And they said, what if we just apply SDF or if we apply SDF and fluoride varnish? The bottom line is this paper showed that the success of a rest went from like 75% to 95% when using the two-step protocol. This is an early device that Marcus invented that enabled us to apply silver diamine fluoride and then fluoride varnish very rapidly in the field. So when, when should we use this? I use SDF whenever I see caries, period. It's the first thing I do. I treat the lesion when I do the exam. I don't wait. I mean, any type of caries is going, to, let me just step, step back for a moment. Clearly in anterior teeth where we're going to have a dark spot is going to be a problem. I may be more conservative, but certainly on all posterior carriers, I begin to man manage with SDF. Children that have be behavior management challenges, et cetera, um, treat lesions that are difficult to treat, they often can be treated more easily with SDF and stopped. Okay. Treat decay with SDF as the first step. How, how often should you apply it? Well, I like to apply it more often. And, and when possible, I will apply SDF and reapply it within two weeks. And I'll apply it again within three months. So I like to do two or three applications. Nobody knows what is the best application, but more is better without any question. There have been no adverse reports um, from the use of SDF in Japan for over 50 years. Again, a contraindication would be a silver allergy. That is so unusual as to be almost insignificant, but it should be part of our PARQ and our consent. So what kind of protection should we have in the clinic? Definitely we should be wearing gloves. That's my hand with a big black stain on it. <laughs> Silver diamine fluoride will stain your countertops. It will stain your lab coat. It will stain your skin. It stains everything. Remember, this just goes away in a short period of time. Here's an example of some more uh, teeth that turn dark over time, anterior and posterior. Now let's talk about SMART. This is where we combine the attributes of silver diamine fluoride and carries a rest and also the benefit of glass ionomer cement as an atraumatic restorative treatment. So um, we've all heard about ART, atraumatic restorative treatment. Well, we've modified that to SMART, silver modified ART. That's where that comes from. So we combine, here's some images from John Fraschella over time where he applied SDF and then he covered with GIC. If you cover the SDF immediately, the GIC will turn dark. That's because the silver penetrates the GIC. If you treat the tooth and it, let it turn dark and then apply the GIC later, you will not have that dark stain. Here's um, John Fraschella with Jeremy and I. I called John Fraschella Dr. Smart. He pretty much invented this technique. Um, here's some more images. If you look at, at this image right here in the middle, you'll see this dark halo around the, the cavity with the glass ionomer cement filling in it. That is not a failure. And we have to encourage clinicians to realize that is silver inside the tooth protecting it. This is one of my early ones. This is a, an anterior uh, canine 
I arrested it at a big, ugly, dark spot in the smile. Well, I just took my round burr and I removed a little bit of that dark arrested decay around the perimeter and I put a GIC, boom, no shots, fix it in five minutes. It's really easy to do a smart. This is from Jeanette McLean. Here's the same thing, a lateral incisor. She arrested, she placed GIC. The dark, darkness is gone. These are actually uh, images from my grandchildren <laughs> that I treated with SDF and GIC. Notice you can see the dark halo. I want the silver in there to protect the tooth. We just got this case from a doctor in um, Canada, and I think it's just a beautiful example of the steps. In the upper left, you see a active um, dental lesion, application of SDF, covering with fluoride varnish, lower left, dark, black, arrested lesion, lower right, GIC restoration, covers the black, you can't see a thing. You, this, to me, this is the very best type of restorative dentistry we can have because we have an antimicrobial step and then we have a product which chemically bonds to teeth, glass iron or cement. Here's an x-ray. If you look really carefully, you can see there's a giant cavitation in that second um, primary molar and we placed SDF in there. And if you look carefully at the pulpal side, you can see the, the tertiary dentin that is being formed. We give the tooth a chance to heal itself and we stop the infection. <laughs> this was a really disappointing case that came in. Clearly this person had been to the hospital um, one year earlier and all of it had failed. All of it was failing. So when is all we do is restore lesions and we don't change the biofilm and we don't kill the bacteria, this is what we're gonna get. And I just don't wanna see that ever again. Another fascinating example from Dr. Hirsch in uh, New Jersey, he ended up treating one side with resins and the other side with SDF. This is when he was starting to begin. He didn't do it on purpose. This was just accidentally came in. Well, the side that got treated with resins abscessed, the side that got treated with SDF is just fine. This is an anterior case, again, from Dr. McLean. She's a remarkable clinician. And she arrested all of the anterior decay in this child. And then she carefully covered that up with GIC and they have a beautiful smile again. So I'm not suggesting that we be proud of the dark stain. I'm suggesting that we be happy that it's there protecting the tooth and cover it up when possible. This is a couple of, of what I call smart sealants where we arrested the early decay in the fissure system and simply covered it up with GIC. This is a kid that had decay in the fissure system of all their teeth. And I basically put SDF on all of the upper and lower teeth. And when they came back and their lesions were arrested, I put GIC on my finger and I just rubbed it on the occlusal surfaces and put sealants in, done. This kid, 20 years ago, I would have taken to the OR and without a doubt. So the idea that I can stop the decay in minutes using SDF and GIC to me is a miracle. Here's another image from Dr. Hirsch showing, a, I mean, if you look at the x-ray, this is a big lesion, very close to the pulp. Okay, put SDF in there, put GIC in, and a year later, no symptoms, completely solved. This is one of my grandchildren, same thing. Okay, arrested a lesion, um, I did have a talk with their mom <coughs> about candy. <laughs> and then here's the GIC. Um, the image on the right, if you look really carefully, you can see that dark halo. Again, that is silver. And by the way, that tooth came out recently and I bought it from him for $5. And we're waiting to send it to the laboratory in Berkeley to be analyzed. You know, my favorite GIC is um, the GC products. I love Equia Forte. It just has 
great handling characteristics and great strength. I love this product. Okay, we're just gonna, I'm gonna show you this video and then, then we're gonna oh, use my little wrap it up. Already. We're gonna dry your this skin. is Dr. McLean. Okay, there it is. So you can just grab me the brush, I'll dry that. Here's a little air. Good girl. You like pink? I have a pink paintbrush. Mm -hmm. I, I love pink. Okay. Can you push that cotton wash for me? Thank you. We're gonna scrub, scrub, scrub. Oh, you're fine. You can even rest on me. Can you open really big so she can see your tooth? Oh, yeah, there we go. That's perfect, honey. Nice. She does thumbs up. Okay, you can put the bathroom dish away and then you wanna do the key pack piece. I would be happy to. All right, sweetie. You're the best. Look, it's already working. Oh yeah, I can see it already. Right Turning it dark. She's gonna mix the no, special cake. Almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Yeah. Almost done. You got this. Think about your extra prize. Yeah. Maybe I'll get another one out of the bucket. Maybe three. Oh my gosh. That's a special See? little. Luckily oh. for you, the prize die came yesterday. Mm -hmm. Almost done. You just gotta squirt a little stuff and you're uh -huh. done. So once you um get that in there. Do you mind grabbing the two by two and just dab it okay. to dry? Okay. Hey, she's got pink paste. Ooh. And it's magic paste. It transforms to white. Open really big, yeah, You can hold that in hand if you want. I don't know. She's going to dry your tooth. Dry, dry, dry. Yeah. Good girl. Oh, she's fabulous. Okay. And then I'll switch you for the cotton roll. And I squirt a little paste on your tooth. Ta -da. Good girl, honey. It's amazing. All of you people can do this. Everybody can do it. It's that simple. Thank you, Dr. McLean. So um, here's some quick take homes. SDF arrests more than 90% of the caries when it's used at least twice a year has powerful indirect prevention. Studies are showing how effective it is. Um, we're gonna see SDF and GIC used more and more and less and less needles and drills. It's amazing. So I'm gonna go past this. Um, this is an amazing story of a mom who uh, brought her child from Missouri um, for us to arrest her tooth decay so that she wouldn't need general anesthesia. The mom is a PhD molecular biologist. She knows what she's doing. And she brought her to us at age two. At age four, she was going to school and was concerned about the dark spots on her front teeth. And so we met up at a vacation house in Redmond, Oregon, and Dr. Fraschella and I placed GIC veneers on her front teeth to protect her smile, look at that beautiful smile, so that she could go to school. Jeremy Horse couldn't resist. He showed up out of nowhere. I think he parachuted in, okay? And then two years later, mom mails us Claire's teeth because they exfoliated. And we sent them to the laboratory in Berkeley. There we go. And there's the image. You can see the red is the silver that was you know, present inside the enamel. And you can see that veneer of GIC that covers up the dark spots on the teeth. This is just my favorite case, the one I'm the most happy about. And here she is now with no dental disease. Her pr primary teeth are exfoliated and her permanent teeth are coming in uh, naturally. This is a child who was severely disabled. She was on a respirator and paralyzed in my office. I actually called the anesthesiologist and asked him if she would be a candidate for treatment. And he laughed at me, there's no way. We were able to treat her right there in the front, in the, in the waiting room of my dental office. 
with SDF and stop all of her lesions. And here she is three years later, she's now out of the wheelchair, she's smiling, she has no decay. I never would have been able to treat this patient if I didn't have SDF. It's just really amazing. So again, I recommend this um, November 2012 CDA journal, which tells about our story. And I know that we're running out of time. So um, after the CDA paper came out, somebody read it in Ecuador. <laughs> and we got a request from the Ministry of Health to come observe us working in Kaiser, Oregon. And so three dentists came from Ecuador, watched us. Then they invited us to go back to Ecuador to conduct a pilot study in a remote school, which we did in 2014. This is Marcus inventing the tools to make that possible, okay? And here's that Air Anywhere device because we had no electricity in this remote area. And so we have an entire dental office in this um, suitcase and portable Air Anywhere. And we're able to treat hundreds of children in the mountains of, um, of Ecuador. A couple of years later, we were invited to come to Ghana. We were told that there aren't enough dentists in Ghana. So will you please bring your, your technology there? Um, just take, here we are drawing. There's no electricity in Ghana. So we're applying SDF. So we're applying fluoride varnish. Apparently. And she comes. Because I noticed not all of them. Okay. Just more melanin. Notice the eyewear, very important to protect the eyes of the child. Yeah, you're going to start. I, I don't do it, Marcus. I, had to, I did that the other day, and then it was chaos. All right. And we met a wonderful Ghanaian dentist, Dr. Alma, who attended dental school at the University of Michigan and practiced in the U.S. for 20 years and then went back to her home in Ghana, and we've remained friends ever since. We went to the University of Ghana Dental School and gave a lecture to all of the students about the medical management of caries. Water. All right, so we've been using a here and it helps us massively. I mean, the kids, when we listen to the kids are so comfortable, they don't cry at all, and then we see excellent results. So we remind the Nubiki all across the world. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to thank uh, my son, Marcus, who has been on this journey with me and is the inventor that's creating all the technology that enables us to take this around the world. Um, we went, did another project in Bolivia um, with about 300 children in a remote area. And this is the Smiles Forever Foundation in Seattle, Washington, which uh, supported this project. Here are a couple of Bolivian dentists with some advantage arrest. And here we are setting up our clinic. We treated about 300 children in this event. It was an amazing, amazing opportunity. Unfortunately, this is often what we saw. In the developing world, tooth decay is a serious problem, a serious problem that we need to get ahead of. And I think that SDF earlier is going to be able to do that. We recently published the findings. So the projects in Ecuador, in Bolivia, and Ghana were published in the Journal of Public Health International. This is an open access journal and you're able to read the data from these two projects. These are not research projects. They're humanitarian outreach programs where we collected data very carefully. And of course, I recommend the Smart Oral Health book it tells about these projects we did internationally in more detail, and it's free. So once again, I um, encourage you all to visit the Medical Management of Carries Library in a couple of uh, weeks when it's up, and you'll see enough stuff to keep you busy for the rest of your life. 
And here I'll wrap up with uh, some of Marcus's inventions. We're creating devices that enable us to treat a lot of children. So go to a school, treat 100 children in one day. These devices on the left are delivery devices for SDF and fluoride varnish. In the picture on the right, I'm holding a device that is a handheld triturator. So in Africa and a lot of places we go, there's no electricity. So how would we mix glass iron or cement? Thank you, Marcus, now we can. So I guess my, my statement is let's make the world a smarter place to be. And uh, I thank my patients at my, pra at my practice in Kaiser and all the wonderful children I've met around the world. Um, and here they are all grown up with no cavities. <laughs> That's it. Any questions? There are a few in okay. the chat if you want to look through. Okay, if I can figure out. There we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, so can you please go over your app reapplication protocol? Okay, so yeah. It depends on how much decay the child has. So if the child has pretty severe decay, I want to get them back soon. So I'll do one treatment and I'll do another treatment in a week. And then I'll do a third treatment um, three weeks after that. So three intensive treatments. I think this is more like an antibiotic. You know, you don't just take one pill. You start out taking two pills and then you take one pill every six hours. Okay, I'm not sure how to operate the chat. There's a question. Um, okay. You ask the questions and I'll try and answer them. How's that? Yep. <laughs> what about our elderly patients with dry mouth syndrome and lots of secondary decay at the gingiva around the crowns? Yes. SDF is the answer, period. Get SDF around those crown margins. It will stop the decay in the cementum and the dentin. And you don't need to do anything. It just stops and prevents the uh, progression of that problem. Okay. Next question. If there is likely carious exposure, but the tooth is asymptomatic, what's the risk in applying SDF to the lesion? Yeah. So the only real contraindication is, is active pulpitis. So I wouldn't want to put SDF on a tooth where I think the pulp, you know, is going to come in contact with the SDF and, and the tooth is already symptomatic. I would rather go to a pulpectomy or whatever to resolve that. If you don't know, then the, the, the pulp's probably dead. So if it's dead, you know, you can find that out by heat or cold or electricity, you know, to test it, then just put the SDF everywhere. It's not going to hurt. Next question. What studies are there on adult teeth? Um, many. And again, when you go to the MMC library, you're going to find more studies than you care to. <laughs> <clears throat> I did see a question about using super floss. Let me just address that. So, Flossing SDF into those interproximal spaces is something I'm really fond of, but you can get it all over the place. So we put the super floss, we dry the, the interproximal space, put the floss between the teeth, and then put a drop of SDF on the, on the floss, either on the buccal or lingual side, and then move the floss back and forth. That's how we do it. Looks like one more question. Do you have an informed consent form? Yes, we do. And the informed consent form is in the book. <laughs> or if you will send me an email, I will, I will have it sent to you. And if you have Revastar, can you use just one step or should it just be thrown away? Yeah, so in the Revastar, the, the SDF portion is great. It's exactly like Saferide. It's exactly like Advantage of Rust. It's the, it's the KI part that I would just throw away. But it's also really expensive. So, you know, I'd, I'd look at some other options. Those are all the questions in the chat. 
If anybody else has one, feel free to ask. Do you have any advice for getting SDF out of countertops? <laughs> um, bleach and scrub. <laughs> Thanks. Have a carpenter come and put a new countertop. It's it's hard. <laughs> really hard. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I just would like to, uh, from sad personal experience, we found that fingernail polish was helpful in removing it from countertops. So Kurt's a hero, and he probably knows more than I do. So listen to him. Well done, Kurt. There's a question in the chat. Does insurance cover this? So we fortunately now have a... Uh, two CDT codes, 1354 is for, again, it's used for carries of rust, ironically, with a product that's only approved for desensitization. But yes, there is that code. There recently has come out a 1355 code, which is going to be the code that is used for prevention. The way that I think this is going to go is we're going to see SDF not just being placed on cavitations, but being placed on teeth like we place fluoride varnish, okay? And when when we get to, we're not at that point yet. When we get there, we'll have a code, 1355 used for prevention. Any more questions? So let me, let me make a comment about dentist and hygienist relationship. Um, granted, when I started using SDF, I, I, I was so nervous about using it. I didn't want anyone else to use it. And over time, it became obvious to me that this is so effective and it's simple and it can be put into the hands. Now, this was before the Board of Dentistry had made any decisions about who can use SDF, et cetera. We now were in a much better place, and certainly a dental <clears throat> assistant can use SDF under supervision, and a dental hygienist can use it. But clearly, the, the medical management of caries is not something that requires years and years of surgical training, okay? So the, the more we empower our teams to identify and treat the more people that we're gonna be able to care for. Well, I would say thank you for the invitation. It's been a delight to, to go through the story and to listen to your questions and I wish you all well and uh, communicate with me if I can help in any way. Thank you for a great presentation. Very informative. I am going to Bolivia in a month and I might be vanished in the jungle for six months. So keep trying. <laughs> Can you give us your uh, email again? So yeah, it's steve at nodk.com. Thank you. My pleasure. And for those of you who I have your email address, I will send you a copy of the PowerPoint presentation when I receive it. Thanks, Rose. Thanks, Rose. Thank yeah. you so much. This is great. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.